I'm excited about um, today's webinar. So uh, it's going to have a lot of good information, I hope, for our um, prospects and clients alike that have joined. So let's get started. Um, I'm Lindsay Jensen. I'm the Strategic Accounts Director here at MPartner. Um, and we're here to talk about partner journeys. Rob, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Yeah, thanks, Lindsay. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Uh, this is Rob Franks. Uh, I'm the Senior Director of Solutions Engineering and Architecture here at Impartner. Thanks. Okay. We are going to talk about something very exciting today that I'm, um, man, I've been waiting for this for a while. So today we'll talk about the ability to create partner journeys within Impartner. And for those of you who are not um, familiar with him partner yet um, a little bit about us is you know we've we're kind of that strategic tool that helps you um, derive the best performance out of your partners and today is no exception to that what we're rolling out to you today is going to only emphasize and increase the revenue and value that a PRM can bring to your company and your partner program. Um, here's a little take on some of our clients. Um, this slide gets messier and messier as time progresses, but I love seeing it. And I'm sure there's a lot of you who can see your logos in there, T-Mobile, Comscope, um, several of you on the call today. So thank you for joining. Um, and let's get into what um, journey partner journey mapping is. Um, journey Builder is going to be kind of our new way to create and build a partner journey. And, and I think it's really important that we, under, we don't compartmentalize what a partner journey should be about. It's not just about onboarding. It's not just about um, training. But there's so many different elements um, that really our CAMs or our BPMs have to manage for our partners and it's not scalable. So this tool will really give us the ability to interact with partners in a whole new way, um, giving them almost a checklist or how-to guide on whatever you want to focus their attention on. It could be a get well plan for those partners who maybe aren't as successful or have kind of fallen off of the um, performance sheet or helping someone navigate your new program that you've just launched. Maybe you've done a rebrand, things like that. Partner uh, Journey Builder is going to revolutionize the way we work with partners, the way we interact with them, and really increase our ability to scale and touch partners um, you know, throughout our program in a different capacity. Rob, what are your what are your thoughts, your feedback on that? Yep, I, I think it's a game changer. I, th I think it's uh, journeys of some, uh, journeys are something that we've all done. We're, we're probably doing them today, but we're doing on spreadsheets, we're doing them on PowerPoints, we're doing them on backs of cocktail napkins, right? This is just a way to formalize those journeys, that strategy to take a partner from one, one point uh, within your program to the next. Um, so constantly moving the needle forward for our partners, whether they be new partners or mature partners, those partners, as you mentioned, Lindsay, that aren't maybe performing at, at, um, at capacity, um, but doing it in an automated way and giving every partner the same experience. So whether they're your top 10% or your bottom 80%, um, we should be able to, through journeys, give that same consistent experience for every single partner. I think you're right. I think when we've done research on this, we've noticed that when we have partners that are extremely successful, it can be correlated to an amazing channel account manager, right? Somebody who is actively engaged, holding partners' hands in order to get them to a level of expertise or, you know, certified on the tool or help them to co-brand documents or email campaigns in order for them to get their marketing growth out there and really create some deal reg and opportunity generation. But this is a tool that will kind of replace, not 
replace the channel account managers, but that you know, ability to handhold your partners and then make it scalable across the system so that every in your program, every partner has the opportunity to be successful, not just the ones that are tied to that channel account manager. Yeah, I, I, I think we just optimize the channel account manager's position rather than managing a spreadsheet, rather than following up you know, each day with 30 phone calls to partners reminding them, we're now gonna allow partners to self-serve. They can see exactly where they sit within the journey. They can take control of that journey. Channel manager is more strategic uh, rather than doing that, you know, menial administrative type work. Exactly. So really excited to see this. Yeah, uh, I'll take it from here, Lindsay. So just a couple of things that I want uh, folks to consider as you think about partner journeys. Um, and, and I think these these um, bullets here pertain to whether or not you use a partner for, for PRM or whether or not you use journeys. But if, as you think about onboarding partners, as you think about the life cycle of your partners, I, I think these are just some some learnings that, that I wanted to share. Um, and the first, of course, is not every partner is the same. Uh, if we're shoehorning everybody into the same journey, we're probably not thinking about the partnerships strategically. And so you might have different partner types. You might have partners in different geographies. You might have partners that, that are different tiers or levels. So think about the different journeys that you might want to uh, roll out for the different partner types within your program. Um, and and I'll just skip to bullet three. These 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 journeys can be daisy chained together. So again, I'm a new partner in EMEA, right? That might be two journeys. I might be a partner in EMEA who's underperforming. That might be another journey that we we couple onto the solution. So you can you can connect this journey so that we're really talking about managing the entire partner life cycle. From, from from beginning to to revenue ready to to maturity to you know really being strategic for you. Um, the journey is so the the graphical the visualization of the journey becomes so critical. I mean, think about when you log into your frequent flyer miles program. Not that anybody's traveling anymore, but I used to log in there a lot and take a look at where I was and what I needed to do to get to the next level and the benefits of, of where I current, currently sat in the program. Kind of the same model here. So that graphical representation becomes a real value add for the partner so they can see exactly what they've done and what needs to happen next. No, I and love then, that, Rob. Yes. I think you're right. Like there's so many things that, you know, I, I like to use the example of um, using my Google map when I'm in a city, right? Where do I go? What's my next step? in order to get to my destination. My destination is to make more money selling this product. So what do I need to do to get there? And this is a graphical representation of every element along the way in order for you to be successful, you to get to that end result. Yeah, and we just talked about this in our last uh, webinar. Um, a lot of people will default to Revenue. Hey, if the partner's bringing in revenue, then they don't need a journey because that's what I want them to do. Um, there, there's some nuance now that I think we need to think about as, as channel managers. And we need to look at several different data points, not just the one easy revenue data point. So we want you to think about, has the, con has the partner signed their contract? Have they uh, interacted with your training? Have they looked at your your portal pages that deal with your competition? Um, you know, have they logged in in 90 days, right? We There's lots of data elements that we wanna start thinking about that will really create that journey and, and give you a good sense of, of whether or not your partner's in a position uh, to, to be as valuable as possible. Okay, I'm gonna switch over here and uh, show you some live software. Uh, so let me get out of PowerPoint and let me drag my demo instance over for you. Okay, so just in our last 10 minutes or so here, just wanna show you some elements of the journey. So 
as as you um, enable journeys within Partner, you'll see a new object within your PRM admin view. And you can have one or many journeys and they're intended to be created by business users. I don't have to have a CS degree to, to take advantage of journeys in any way. Um, before I kind of jump into how to create one, I do want to show you some really nice metrics uh, around uh, journeys so that you have insight into uh, the the action uh, of these journeys. And I can I can see exactly from a from an account perspective, you know, where they start, who's in it, how many have completed, and I can drill in further. And these these reports, I can keep even keep going down. These reports are both at the account level and at the user level. So I can always see where does partner A sit? And I can also see where do the employees within partner A sit within any journey, okay? All right, so let me come back here. I'm just gonna click on my object again and just kind of show you some elements of a journey and how you might think about using these. So I'm gonna click on this one down here, my new partner journey. So this is obviously a few steps that I want new partners to take uh, as they come into my program. So if I just scroll down here, this is kind of what we uh, have built. And there's a good, a good graphical representation of, of kind of how to build a journey if you click on that builder button. So, a journey consists of phases and activities. Uh, and a phase can have many activities within them. You guys can choose uh, how many activities to add to a phase. And a phase will also have associated with it a timeline. You know, Do I want a 90 day uh, period of time to be given to the partner to finish the activities within a phase? Do I want it to be 14 days? Okay, uh, So that's kind of the, the paradigm. So we've got a journey, and then within the journey, we have phases. And then within phases, we have activities. OK, so let me just kind of show you here. So these blue boxes represent the phase. And these, these colored rectangles represent the activities. And the way that I add is I just simply hit the plus button. Okay. So there's, there's some categories of activities that you can choose from. And, and I should mention here, right, this is this is phase one of 100, I guess, uh, is my guess. Um, there, there's going to be a, a constant evolution of our journey builder. It becomes a, just a critical core piece of our solution. And so I would anticipate, and we've already seen there's a Rev 2 coming out in the next couple of months, Rev 3 by the end of the year. So um, it's something that you're investing in that will, will constantly be enhanced. And one of the areas of enhancement will be, I think, additional activity categories that you can choose from. So as an example, you know, if I wanted to um, add some revenue activities, right? I want you to register your first deal. I can add that. I can say, maybe I want you to register your first five deals and the deal size has to be 50 grand. Let's make it tough. So I'm just starting to define my activity, right? And then I'll add it to the phase. Okay, Real, really simple to do. Let's look at maybe another uh, category, right? This training one is really popular. Hey, I want you to finish training course A within the first phase. And I say, I want to complete the certification. You know, which one do you want to complete? And boom, you're done. Okay, so again, point and click, uh, pretty easy to use. I want to show you one more here, uh, this other, okay? The other is a way right now, it's kind of a cheat. It's a way for the partner to tell you that they've completed an activity. So rather than the system managing the fact that I took training or that I've performed a, an, an activity, if you have an offline activity, which is often the case, you know, come and visit HQ or pick up the phone and call your channel manager, something that we're, we're not currently managing within the PRM. This allows 
the partner to mark the activity as complete. So they do have that ability to maybe manage some of those offline uh, capabilities, okay? I love that feature, Rob, because I think there are so many times it's not a system. It's not something like that that we need to do, um, but we need to have record those efforts. So I love that one. Thanks for yeah, sharing absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and we know that systems can't catch everything. We, we, we sometimes think that they can, but CAMs exist for a reason, and there's there's offline phone calls and emails and touch points and other things that, that we just want to capture. And so this is a kind of an easy way to do that. Great. Okay. Okay. It's kind of how you build the journey. Um, you always can preview it. You always can kind of see um, what the journey will look like for the partner. Right now we're pretty graphical. Uh, or I'm sorry, we're pretty text heavy. I, I, I would say in the journey, we're gonna have enhancements to the presentation layer of the journey ongoing as well. So kind of think about that as, uh, as you begin using journeys. And then what do these look like for the partner? So got just a couple of examples. So this is my demo environment. I'm logged in as Carol, the partner. And I've got a, a, a page here within my portal where I can see my journey or journeys. And you can see that we're representing the completion of an activity within a phase by uh, line striking out the title. So Carol can see that she's completed these three and that she's got, well, looks like she's completed all of her, right? All of her uh, activities. Um, let me show you another one here, uh, another example, journeys. Uh, this partner has not completed everything, if I remember right. Yeah, and so you can see that they've only completed one activity and we're highlighting the next activity within that green bar. Okay, so it's really, really kind of see, really easy to see kind of what I need to do and what's on deck. So right now Rob, the journey, quick. oh yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna ask a quick question. If I am Carol, can I have several journeys at a time? Yeah, great question. And the answer is yes. So you, over here on the left, Carol would see the different journeys that she has in sequence. So when when onboarding journey is complete, the next journey is active and she can start seeing her progress against that. So great, great thought there, Lindsay. More than one, absolutely. And that and that kind of brings up um, an important relationship between journeys and some other components within our PRM that help drive the journeys. So there's a really tight relationship, uh, let's see, between journeys. And if I click over here, again, I'm playing kind of the role of the admin. There's a really tight relationship between journeys and workflow. So I can, I can move a partner just click on this. I can move a partner into a journey or out of a journey or into another journey using my workflow. So for those of you that have looked at our workflow, um, you'll see a new action that you can add to a workflow. And I've added one here. You can see it's called the journey builder. And the way that I got it is I can just pick that from the list. So you can create a, an automated workflow that moves partners in and out of journeys using our workflow engine. You can also, let me come over here to users. You can also do that ad hoc. So if you wanna drop somebody into a journey, if you want them to bypass the new partner journey or something to that effect, you can always come into a contact and you can say, I would like to assign them a journey and I can do that in an ad hoc way. Or I can run a query against my contact or my user list. So if I, if I wanted to give this query, so I have this query here. If I wanted to give the results of this query 
the same journey, I can come up here and hit this gray button and assign, in this case, 25 users to a to a, a journey. I can do that as well. So we we definitely want to automate, but we always kind of keep a, a manual back door open just in case you guys need to override something or do something manually. Another question, Rob, can a partner admin at a partner account assign journeys? Oh, that's a good question. I don't think today delegated administration covers the assignment of journeys. Um, that being said, if I'm a delegated administrator at a partner and I create a user, that user will be new. And if there's a new journey, that workflow will pick it up and add them automatically to that. So the workflow will, will manage that for the partner. The manual override today is only from a PRM administrator, not a partner administrator. Great question. We should probably capture that as maybe an enhancement request, uh, Lindsay, for our product team. I think it's already um, slated. Okay. Um, but I don't know what version, but it is a great question. Thank you. All right, team. That's what I wanted to cover off. Uh, I wanted to show you kind of how to get to them, how to build them, what the partner experience is, and then the reporting around them. Um, Rev one, lots of power in this first Rev, but I would anticipate additional features and functions coming down almost every release of ours uh, in the next, I would say, you know, 12 to 18 months. And, and a lot of that will come from you guys interacting with journeys, telling us what you like, telling us what we missed, how to tweak it. We really love hearing from our, uh, our customer uh, advocacy board and your feedback. So um, get this and start using it and tell us what, what we can do to make it better. I agree. No, this is awesome. And I would love to open it up for questions. So if you have a question, please go ahead and um, send it through and, and Rob and I will discuss. Um, one that also came up is with the phases, is there um, reports or, you know, report on completion of a phase, not just a task? Is that possible? So currently right now, the reporting is on the journey itself. And that additional enhancement around reporting will be what activities have been completed at what rate, what phases are being completed. So we're capturing that data. We just haven't built out the, the UI to, to leverage that data that we're capturing within those more granular levels of information. Excellent. What are some of the most interesting journeys you've seen so far, Rob? Oh, um, Lots of onboarding journeys. I think that's probably where most people are starting. They're not they're not building journeys for um, mature partners. Uh, we're seeing you know companies that are in high growth mode or that have been affected positively by current market conditions that have an influx of partners that are trying to join their programs. Um, we're seeing um, uh, onboarding journeys. Um, that are being built in such a way that you join the program. The, we're seeing companies kind of lower the bar to join the program, but to get to a level of, of you know, commission base or, or actually taking full advantage of the program, they've got to go through these certain activities. So have you signed your contract? That's, a, that's been a big activity where, where we're now tracking the fact that you've clicked the box that you've you've now agreed to terms and conditions, and now we're now we're now opening up the program to you a little bit more. Um, right. And then training is becoming a real key critical piece of journeys. It's not just a nice to have anymore. It's 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 gamifying that that training, adding additional value to it, so that partners can now level up into you know more strategic uh, tiers or levels. Yeah, I've seen. Um you know, focus on the training piece, but making it more about, hey, here's a new product that we're launching. Here is the, um, you know, the announcement of the product, right? Here's the press release. So read that, put that in the journey, and then go take the training, then certify, then do a co-branded document that you can send out to prospects. Go into your social on demand and post this, you know, 
snippet on this new product release, right? So it's not just about the training element, but all the pieces that you string together in order to make that training on that new product effective and impactful. So I love those, those are really good. Um, I'm excited to hear so a lot more. Yeah, those product specific launches, the, those product specific training or journeys, I think are gonna be a game changer that I think we'll see partners enable, be enabled faster on new product, new features, new services based off of these journeys that our clients are building. Great example. Another question is, is the partner facing side of um, the journey builder um, CMS or able to change the design? And so currently the, yeah, so currently the design is sort of stagnant. Uh, it's, it's stated in the, in the portal itself. Um, additional options for gauges or progression bars or other UI enhancements will come in more as widgets that you can kind of just drag and drop. Uh, so currently the CMS isn't controlling that, um, it's controlled by the application itself. Excellent, great question. Um, we have another one. Do we have a, a choice about whether certain actions are just for a user and some for the overall account? Oh, um, I think everything's based off of the of the user. Um, so you can have different user types within an account. So, you know, Lindsay and I are a great example. She's a traditional seller. I'm more of a technical seller. Um, so my activities within my technical journey might be different than hers as a traditional seller's journey. So that's the way that you kind of control that. But these, these journeys are user focused and then we roll up the metrics to the account. Definitely. And I guess you could utilize segmentation and create journeys specifically for different types of partners. So if you had specific OEM partners, you could create a journey and it would be overall at that account level, but it would still be each user within that partner account that has to go through that journey. Yeah. I, um, you know, Lindsay and I were on a call yesterday with a client, and I said, segmentation, workflow, and journeys are all kissing cousins. And she said, what does that mean? You know, it, it was a, a poor way of me saying they're, they're really closely related. Um, you're going to, you're going to leverage all three of those components to make that good contextual experience for each one of your partners as, as you roll out a journey. Excellent. Let's see, do we have any other additional questions? Um, it looks like we have a couple more, but I know we're at the top of the hour. So um, we'll capture these questions and respond to you. Richard, I'll reach out to you directly um, to answer your question, but we'll respond to all remaining questions uh, via email. But we appreciate everyone attending. Thank you so much. Um, we look forward to hearing your feedback on Journey Builder. Um, and having you guys all utilize this new functionality that I, I really truly believe this will change the way we interact with our partners um, and improve our channel program. Thanks everybody for your time. Talk to you soon. Thank you, see ya.